Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today, we're going to read a very short book by Annie Rix Malitz. Hopefully, you got a chance to listen to my episode where I read her book, Prosperity Through the Knowledge and Power of Mind. Annie Rix Malitz was a fantastic New Thought teacher and is very similar in vain to Elizabeth Town and Florence Scovel Shin. She has her own unique style, and I love all of her writings, but this book packs a punch. It's short and it's powerful. I talked a little bit about this on my episode by Neville Goddard, where he has a lecture called All Things Are Possible. It is one of the most fundamental things If I could just get one thing to you, one tiny little thing of all the episodes that you've ever listened to of the reality revolution, I just want you to know one thing and that anything is possible. I hear people so often tell me that it's just not possible, Brian. There's just no way that'll happen. I can't see that happening. That belief alone is the reason. If you can believe in me, I have seen it. I know it's true. It happened in my life. It's happened in so many people's lives. And I want you to believe it. Anything is possible. Whatever you want. It's there for you. All you have to do is believe. Don't take my word for it. It's in the Bible. All things are possible to them that believe. What is it that you want to happen? What thing do you need? Have you been telling yourself it's just not possible? Maybe it's that little voice that says no. Not for me. Not in my present circumstances. Forget about it. Everything is possible. The most phenomenal things. I have seen people overcome the final stage of cancer. Serious bankruptcies. I've seen so many wonderful things. People that have overcome immense difficulties that seemed hopeless. And sometimes the very first step, all you have to do is just believe. She carries this message very well in this booklet, All Things Are Possible to Them That Believe by Annie Ricks Malitz. All things are possible to them that believe. When the disciples of Jesus asked, What must we do that we may work the works of God? All the reply that Jesus gave was belief. And this was the substance of all of his instructions. Set your thoughts in a certain direction. Make your mind to hold thoughts that believe in the good as possible. That is all that is necessary for us to do to increase our belief, to extend the boundaries of what we believe to be possible. All that we are now is the result of our believing. Every action and word shows forth what we have been believing and are now holding in mind. When you lie down at night, you believe you will arise in the morning. When you walk every step you take, you do so through the exercise of faith, believing that you will be supported. So all things that you do are simply pictures of your faith or what you are believing in. Your powers of believing are exercised in three ways. By thinking, by speaking, by doing. 
thought is the causative power. Words and deeds are the fruit of your thinking. Keep the thoughts upon believing in the good, and your words and deeds will conform to your thoughts. These should be one and the same always. It is not enough to think aright, but also we must speak aright and act aright. When you are trying to believe in the reality of the presence of your desire, do not let the lips speak as though there were any other presence than good. See that all your words and deeds are consistent with your thoughts. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them. What things soever, that is, it makes no difference for what you ask, if you will believe, you shall receive. But if you are doubting in your heart as to whether God is willing, you should receive, then indeed you will not receive. Have no doubt in your mind of God's willingness to give you any good thing that you would give yourself. Jesus taught us to think that God is just as willing to give us good gifts as is any earthly father. If you as a child were asking yourself as a father for any good thing and the father in you would be willing to grant you that which you ask, then you must also think God is willing to give you what you desire. Cannot the same power that grants you your wish protect you from any evil that might seem to come through receiving the good you desire. Have no doubt of any kind in the heart. No doubt of the reasonableness of your request or whether it is good in God's eyes. No doubt of God's willingness to give. For verily I say unto you that whatsoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith our faith must be such that it cannot be moved by appearances and it must persist when impossibilities seem to face us. Lord, I believe. Help thou. My unbelief is our prayer. And it means put away from us all doubt, all distrust, all discouragement, and establish us in the belief, in the presence of all good. There was once a woman who demonstrated just what was the belief that we must have in order to get the answer to our prayer. It is said of her that she was blind, totally without sight. She heard of a man whose prayers were healing all for whom he prayed. And when she heard of him, a strong faith arose in her heart that his prayer would heal her. Her faith was stupendous, and so strongly did it possess her soul that at last she said that she must go to him. He lived in a town some miles away, distant, an obscure shoemaker plying his trade daily and praying for all who asked him. She went to him with a strong heart in the belief that immediately after his prayer she would see. He prayed. She opened her eyes, fully expecting to see, but she did not. She was amazed, stunned. She could not understand it. She left the shoemaker in a dazed state of mind, pondering over the master's words, Whatsoever things ye desire, pray, believing, and ye shall receive. All the long journey home, she tried to find wherein her faith had been lacking. 
when suddenly she realized that her believing had found its limit because of appearances, and she had held it only because of something that was to come by it, whereas she must have faith no matter what the appearances and not be moved. So she determined to believe that God had healed her, and she would hold to that thought. I can see forever and never let appearances move her from believing that God had given her her sight. She went home and was met by her expectant family, to whose inquiry she answered, I can see, and great was their rejoicing. But soon they saw, she was just the same after her return as before. She went to the healer. To their questions as to why she had said such things when she did not manifest sight, she replied, I am following my master's instructions to believe that I have received what I desire, and I shall never speak or act contrary to what I am determined to believe. So she went on and would never let anyone speak to her or act toward her as though she were blind. At times it seemed almost more than she could do, but never would she be moved. She declared if she had to go on believing against appearances all the rest of her natural life. At times the family feared her mind had been affected and she had much to do to withstand their fears for her sanity. One night, not very long after her return home, as she was lying in bed, thinking upon her determination to believe, in spite of all opposition, suddenly there was a glimmer before her eyes. She leaped up in bed and cried, I see, indeed I see, bring a light for I do see. The family thought, now she has gone crazy, but they brought the light, and she proved then and there that she saw, and she has been seeing ever since. That was the faith she had to manifest. To know no limit to her faith, no appearances could cause her to doubt, or to let disappointment or discouragement possess her and displace her beautiful faith. If you have asked God for anything and you have not received, do not think God refuses it to you. No, the only trouble is you have not asked aright. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss. God has not heard you for it is written, God heareth not sinners. That is, he hears not mistaken prayers. Do not stop praying, but change your prayers. Pray without ceasing. Pray in every right way you can think of. At last, you will speak the words that reach God, the words that are the substance out of which the answer to your prayers is made. For this is true. Out of your own words are formed the manifestation you desire to show forth. Never give up praying. Never give up believing in the possibility of having that which you desire. Increase our faith. Increase our beliefs in the possibility of all good things being now manifest. Break down the boundaries of our belief. No matter how great our faith may seem to be, make it a little greater. And then look out that our words and actions are consistent with what we are determined to believe. All things are possible to him that will believe. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. This is the whole doctrine of Jesus. Believe. As you will believe, so it is unto you. As a man believeth in his heart, so is he. Thou 
shalt decree. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. Job 28 All the good that is to be manifest in a man's life is already an accomplished fact in the divine mind. The knowledge of God cannot be added to nor taken away from, and he knows all that is to be as that which has always been and is now the complete truth of being. It lies with man to call into manifestation that which already is an absolute and established creation in God. Man is the image and likeness of God, therefore he is spiritual and perfect. He in his true being works after the same manner as God. Inspiration tells us that God creates all things by the word of his mouth, that he says be, and it is so. Man the Son of God does all things as he sees his Father do, and what he decrees comes to pass. When he decrees healing, health springs forth speedily. When he speaks life, deadness disappears. When he declares the powerlessness of wickedness, vice melts to uselessness before his word. Because his inspiration is not from flesh and blood, but from the Father within, he has the key to heaven, and he decrees a thing to come to pass upon the earth that has already been determined upon in heaven in accordance with the Christ prophecy. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of the heavens, and whatsoever thou mayest bind upon the earth shall have been bound in the heavens, and whatsoever thou mayest loose upon the earth shall have been loosed in the heavens. Matthew 19 In ancient times, the disciple who was instructed into the arcana of Egyptian magic was told at a certain stage in his development how to accomplish his wishes and do wonder works by pronouncing the two little words, it is. He was taught to lead a very pure and unselfish life of self-control that he might always know the will of the gods and conform all his wishes thereto. The man who seeks no will but the will of the great God of all can declare concerning any of his desires, it is and his words will come true, for his will is omnipotent. He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand. Daniel 35 The will of the just man is the will of God. It is the desire of every just man that you shall have perfect health. It is the wish of good men and women that you shall be free from debt and live in comfortable circumstances. Every true heart desires you to be pure and loving, intelligent and free. It is the will of God that you shall manifest every quality and condition on the earth that belong to the kingdom of heaven. God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. To every such true and good wish of your heart, say, It is. Then, when you have thus decreed your good, begin to conduct yourself in speech and action as though you had already received it, and it was apparent to the eyes of all. For your word of decree is just like a seed which you have put into the ground, and all that you need to do is to keep it from being trampled upon by doubts and fears and worry, and to see that the sun and the dew of an active faith nourish it until it comes to fruition. And he said, So is the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself, first the blade, then the ear, 
after the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest is come. Mark 26-29 The tongue that can decree effectually never voices an evil wish. Its words are upon the good, the beautiful, and the true. It does not describe disease, for the tongue of the wise is health. It does not linger on accounts of death, accidents, poverty, or sins, for its words are precious, since they are to bring to pass the kingdom of heaven in our midst. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. Jonah 2-8 through eight. Speak ye every man the truth to his neighbor, and let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor. Zechariah 16 and 17 Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor is fulfilled as we do not bear witness to the false in our neighbor, but talk only of the true. The object of this commandment is to train the speech of the aspirant to heavenly powers so that his words will never curse the earth. But every word, though not a conscious decree, shall bless by simply being uttered, by the establishment of truthfulness. The yogi gets the power of attaining for himself and others the fruit of work without the works. Yoga aphorisms of Patanjali. And commenting upon this, Swami Vivekananda says, when this power of truth will be established with you, then even in dream, you will never tell an untruth in thought, word, or deed. Whatever you say will be truth. You may say to a man, be blessed, and that man will be blessed. If a man is diseased, and you say to him, be thou cured, he will be cured immediately. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 7 and 8 Dwell continually in the consciousness of being the Son of the Most High, and let your mouth be filled with good words, both audible and silent. Then glorify God by bringing forth fruits of healing of yourself and others of sinless living, of peace, prosperity, and happiness for all through your silent, immutable decrees. You are God's living decree of good to this world. Let your light shine. Thou shalt decree. See this as a commandment, as imperative as any one of the Decalogue. And God said, Let them have dominion over the earth. The hour cometh, and now is when divine man be that overcomes, takes to himself his mighty prerogatives, and whatever he wishes he brings to pass by pronouncing the magical words. It is. So this is a short booklet, but I thought it would be perfect for an episode to discuss because this does something more than a lot of books do when talking about belief. And that is there are three aspects of belief. As it says, your powers of believing are exercised in three ways by thinking, by speaking, and by doing. When I talk about belief, everybody thinks that I'm just talking about what you think. 
but it's about what you're doing and how you're speaking. People will make jokes about themselves, about their weight, about their appearance, but the subconscious doesn't have a sense of humor. So what I have found is the words that come out of your mouth, even your thoughts are subvocalized. A lot of times people are having thoughts and if you look closely at their mouths, they're talking to themselves. So there are words being said. And by doing. So if you say you want to find love, but you have a dirty house, you don't make your bed, and if somebody wanted to come over to your house right now and they couldn't, in your actions you're saying you don't. There are things that you're doing every day that are actions that define your belief and you may not be aware of it. Hey, I'm really wanting that person out there to find my love, but I'm not going to take a shower for a week while I'm sitting in quarantine. Yeah, for sure. If they're coming over, I'll clean up really quick and maybe I'll take a shower. No, it doesn't work like that. You need to be in the state that right now that person wants to be with you. You can think in your mind that you want to make some money, but then in your actions, you're scared to death to spend any money or a variety of different actions that you take which express a lack of prosperity, a lack of care for money. If you believe that money is good and you see a penny on the street and you don't pick it up, you don't, it's yours, but you don't pick it up then you are saying that money is not important, even though you are believing, oh, money is important to me. Everything comes into your actions. It's all kind of in one umbrella. But a lot of times when people talk about changing their beliefs and that anything is possible, so I would recommend that if this message appealed to you to watch my episode, The Three Most Powerful Reality Creation Techniques, No Meditation Required. There are fundamental ways to create your reality and to change your beliefs, and that is in how you act in your creation. And those things are important. You must change your identity and you do that by changing the way you act, by the words that you do, and by your thoughts. A thought is a third of this whole process. And a lot of people will sit in meditation or do a meditation. For instance, you might do my large sums of money meditation. And then afterwards, you just look around and think about how much money you don't have and you focus on all your lack. So what you need to do is change your beliefs. And this is a simple booklet. She could have made it longer. She didn't have to. It's very much like the feeling is the secret. She could have easily packed this into hundreds of pages. Pray to God that you correct your unbelief. Just make it a point saying, hey, give me some help. I need some help with this. And then start analyzing what your thoughts are. Okay? Then start analyzing what, what you're doing and how you're talking. The last part of this is so important. A lot of people struggle in reality creation because they don't know how to visualize. It's hard to visualize. But you don't need to visualize all the time. You can decree. Especially if we go to the teachings on Neville Goddard, where you believe your divine power, that God is within you, that you are God. All of these teachers are implying that. And if you can grasp that, then if you are God, then whatever you decree will be. So when I imagine for somebody in the Neville Goddard method and I say, I imagine that person is doing well, at the end, I will make a decree. I decree that this person receives the money they need, the health they need, whatever. Oftentimes that decree creates a feeling and it feels like I'm finalizing and setting it out and then now all we have to do is say it is 
implying that it's now, that it is. It is not, it is. So pray to God about your unbelief. Analyze what you're saying, what you're thinking, and what you're doing. Look at your behavior, the way that you walk around your house, the way that you talk to your close family and friends. Your actions may be telling you what your true beliefs are. And then continue to believe. The story that's given in this is a beautiful story. I love it. At the beginning, I was thinking, oh, this is going to be a biblical story. But it's not. What a wonderful idea. She maintained that she could see now in this moment, not in the future, that she could see. In a recent episode that I read with Neville Goddard called Tell Us How to Pray, there is a story that he gives that's very similar about learning how to speak. And in one of the cases, she has a story where somebody wants a job and she has somebody call her and say, I got the job. And then hang up, even though they didn't have the job. So something seems to occur when you outwardly project the reality that you have within. So what I'm recommending for a lot of people, if you're meditating and you're, it's just all an interior thing for you, do something outwardly and symbolic to express it on the outside by saying a word, by doing something. If you want that specific person to come to you or a relationship, lay out a plate at your table. I've said that technique before, but it's what I did. And it worked almost within a couple of days when I did it. Set out a plate at the table like you're going to have dinner with somebody. When you do those things that you would do if you were in a relationship, it seems to move you into that other reality where the thing actually happens. Greg Braden refers to it as belief waves that go out and create the reality around us. Emerson said, what is the hardest task in the world to think? And obviously this is so when one considers that most of us are victims of mass thinking and feed upon suggestions from others. We all know that the law of cause effect is inviolable. Yet how many of us ever pause to consider its workings? The entire course of a man's life has many times been changed by a single change in belief which coming to a person in a flash becomes a mighty power that alters the whole current of human events history is replete with the stories of strong minded resolutely willed individuals who steadfastly holding to their inner convictions have been able to inspire their fellow men and in the face of tremendous and determined opposition have literally created out of nothing great businesses, huge empires, and new worlds. They had no monopoly of thought power. You and every man and woman have this. All you have to do is use it. You will then become the person you wish to be in your imagination. For with the working of the law of cause and effect, you bring into your life the new elements which your most dominant beliefs create within and attract from without. And you can do this by changing your words and actions and decreeing your new belief. Remember, whatever you can conceive of mentally, you can bring into materialization. Health, wealth, and happiness must follow if the proper mental pictures and beliefs are created and constantly maintained through your actions, deeds, and thoughts. For the law of cause and effect is immutable. Know your power. Change your beliefs every day. 
as best you can make your beliefs good ones. Just believe that there is genuine creative magic in believing and magic there will be for belief will supply the power which will enable you to succeed in everything you undertake. Back your belief with resolute action and word and you become unconquerable. A master. And I decree that everyone listening to this podcast has whatever they wish to come true. I get a lot of messages. People are struggling right now. Their jobs are changing. Everything's going to be okay. This is a test and you can pass it. And the first thing I want you to do is really question your beliefs. Do you believe that all is good? Do you believe? Because that is all you need to do. Because all things are possible to those that believe. So thank you for sharing this wonderful booklet with me. And just one thing I want you to go away with, and that is anything is possible. I don't care what it is you're struggling with. Do not give up. Don't give up on it. Don't tell anybody it's not possible. Stop doubting it. Live in a fantasy land. Sometimes that works. So I'm sending out belief waves to everyone for love, happiness, and joy. Because all things are possible to he who believes. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com And welcome to The Reality Revolution.